Inside this video right here, I'm gonna go through exactly the steps, and there's three of them, that you should do after you pass your national registry. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the paramedic coach. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm gonna give you a bonus tip that people normally don't share about EMS. So make sure you stay to the end for that. Now, if you're new here, hit subscribe down below, tap that notification bell. I do multiple videos every single week with lessons, stuff like this, with your burning questions about EMS. And make sure, most importantly, smash and annihilate that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm so more students across the world can see this content. Now, here we go. What we're gonna be talking about right now are the three things. Once you pass National Registry, you get certified, you've passed your practicals, you've passed your written. Where do we go from here? So you don't wanna get lost after you pass your certification. So here's the first thing. First thing, your certification means you pass a test on that day. Your license means that the state is giving you a license to practice. So you gotta now take your national registry and go and apply your state license to practice in the streets as an EMT. Okay, now, the first step after you've done that, okay, that's the pre-step, is this. What you wanna do is I want you to start applying for jobs as soon as possible. But while you're doing that, what I want you to do is I want you to start volunteering as an EMT. Why? Well, when you first get done with your EMT, there may not be that many jobs available at that time. For example, there may be a ton of jobs in your area at one particular time, but then the jobs are filled another time. So what I want you to start doing is, yes, applying for everything that you can, but secondly, I, what I want you to do is start volunteering in your local area so you can gain experience and start networking with other providers. You see, the, one of the ways that I got my first EMS job was through volunteering, getting experience while networking. And see, when you're in the community and you're working, the, some of the volunteers are actually volunteering, but they already have a job in EMS. So maybe you start to meet people from other cities, other towns. You're, but while you're doing that, you're also getting experience. You're not sitting on the couch just waiting for a job to come to you. So I cannot recommend it enough. Start volunteering. Now, how far out are you gonna drive or commute to to start volunteering? Don't make this harder than it is. All you need to do, my friends, I would say look at a 45 minute radius around where you live, and is there any volunteer ambulance services in that area? I would even say maybe up to an hour, I would say. I would go. I've gone 45 minutes, so I'm not gonna tell you to do something that I haven't done, but that I could say an hour could be fair as well. Now, once you start volunteering and you're in an area or you've gotten a job, either one, by the way, you can do both, okay? So there's not, it's not one or the other, you can do both, right? The goal of the volunteer, that one, you're helping out the community, but two, is that you're also getting experience for yourself. So then when you get that paid job, you already have experience. Maybe you already know the hospitals in that area and you've learned more about becoming an EMT. So that's the key. Now, once you either start volunteering or you get a job, here's what I want you to do. I want you to become a master of the roads. What does that mean? Well, what that means is what I want you to do is I want you to start driving after shift or get early before shift, maybe an hour before, an hour after. Start driving around the road so to get used to the community that you're gonna be serving once you get that job or start volunteering. Now, why am I recommending that off shift you would do this? The reason is on shift, well, you gotta think about it. There's calls on shift, right? You're gonna be doing calls. So if you're doing calls or shift duties, you're not gonna have time to be just driving around aimlessly. And sometimes you have to stage in a certain area or be at the base. You can't just be driving around. So I recommend you do what I did when I first started, which was I would go an hour before shift where I have to have to be actually in 
and I would just drive around the town in my car, my own gas, okay? I was that committed. And I just wanted to learn the main routes in towns. So you're gonna learn more while you're uh, doing calls, but it's good to know the area too. Then an hour after shift, I would do the same thing. I would drive around, okay, hey, let me see what's up here. Let me see what's over here, right? So that would be my goal for you to do that. And it only takes a few times of doing that for you to get the main exits, the main highways, the main routes. Here's why. Maps, GPS, all that stuff can fail. Weather conditions can cause problems. Phones can die. GPS can die. Maps, oh, it's not there. I thought it was there. These things can all happen. So what you need to be able to do is no matter what street that you're on, you either have to remember how well you got there and at least go the way back out to the main road. Then once you're on that main road, you know, okay, I'm on this main road. From this main route, this main highway, I can get to the hospital. Even if it's not the fastest way, in the worst case scenario, you could get the patient there still without any assistance from a GPS map, anything. That's what you want to be able to do. You got to know the main streets, the main roads. You're not going to know every street. That's impossible, by the way. And no, anyone that tells you that is absolutely wrong. Okay. That is not, that's impossible to know every single street in a town or a city, especially when you have multiple areas. So that's not gonna happen. But you will get to understand the main roads. That's point number two, okay? Now here's point number three. I want you to become a master of your assessments and the equipment. Because a great patient assessment, plus being confident enough with the equipment, is gonna make you a great EMT, a great EMS provider. Now, how do we do that when we first start? Well, when you first start off, you're going to get, it varies on what you are, but you have to become cleared as an EMT to be on your own. Some places you'll just start off teching, meaning that you'll just be doing patient care. Other places you'll be driving cleared and EMT cleared, so you'll just be able to be able to do both. It depends on what you're doing this, right? What I found from my experience is private ambulance service, they want to get you going faster. A volunteer ambulance, they might have certain people where they, they want to get you going too, but they'll take usually more time with you to get cleared versus a paid service that is probably a lot bigger. And again, the job you're probably going to get right off the bat is going to be a private ambulance service that has like a county or a large area. Not a rule. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's probably the odds are, you know, two out of three EMS providers start off at a private ambulance service. So you probably will too. Okay, now going forward with that is very important. What you want to do is use your training time in order to make sure you touch and use every single piece of equipment on the ambulance, whether it's on a real call and you have you know, the nerves going, or you're doing it if you don't have a call with the, they call it an FTO, a field training officer. Okay, so. That's your time, that training time. Whether the company is going to push you through fast or push you through slow, that's up to the company, right? Not me, not you, anybody. But you need to be able to make sure that you're confident with the equipment. Don't get cleared if you're uncomfortable about a piece of equipment. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be alone on a call with someone who's less experienced than you are. And then you're going to be in charge and you're not going to know how to use a piece of equipment. No, no, no. We can't do that. So you need to be honest and upfront with your FTO about what your abilities are and what you want to learn more about. That's why you don't just go from NREMT passing to, okay, you're all set. You're an EMT now. You are 100% clear to be on your own. And here's your driver. And there you are. Good luck. See ya. Make sense? Okay, cool. Everybody, it is bonus time. You've made it to the bonus time. Give me a hashtag bonus down below if you made it to the bonus time. Now, here it is. The bonus tip right here is once you start, either it's your volunteer or your paid, whatever you start with first, the first three months, what I want you to do is I want you to take a variety of shifts and test out a variety of partners because the secret about EMS is EMS is what you make it. So if you have a great partner and you have great equipment, 
and you're enjoying the community and what you're doing, you're going to really love what you're doing. But that's up to you. So in the first three months, I want you to figure out, who do you like working with? Who do you vibe with? Also, I want you to figure out, hey, what shifts make sense for me? Do I like days? Do I like evenings? Do I like nights? So depending on the company or where you're at, you can say, this is what, I, this is what I'm available for. This is what I like to do here. Okay? So you're not stuck with partner or shift that you don't like. Right? Figure out your schedule. Plan it out. I'll give you a, a little secret bonus tip here at the end. What I used to do is pretty funny, actually. You know those giant calendars, those big, giant, like, like calendars you put out on a desk you used to have? When I first started EMS, I would literally mark every single shift on this giant calendar above my desk when I first started working. And I, you know, I have the hours that I worked in the corner, like, you know, the amount of money and everything. I, I tally everything up as I'm going each week and the shifts and everything. You could do that if you want to when you're first starting. You can say, okay, well, how many night shifts have I worked? How many day shifts? Which ones did I like the best? Circle the ones you like the best. That's actually, that works. It works. So try that out, my friends. Hope you enjoyed that. And I got one more message for you. Odds are, if you're watching this video, you've gotten through your EMT. Maybe you're thinking about AMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic school. Well, if you're thinking about that, I've put together a video library course. Gives you access from BLS all the way to ALS content, literally from pre-EMT all the way to your first day as a paramedic. Inside that course is 180 videos plus access to me to ask questions in our student group, and we are in a thousand strong inside our community. If you want to learn more about that, click learn more in the description. You'll see the first link there. And my friends, thank you so much for watching this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe. Share this with your friends and classmates, and I'll see you next time. Take care. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas, and I'm, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, when I noticed it, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and I, I just knew right then and there um, I have to have this program I have to have all the information that he's willing to give I need all of it